hanging out in the rang bar with all my hoes. What are we doing today, Sean? Actually, it's not what are you doing today? It's what I'm doing today. Big Ev is back, and today we are putting in a larger external water to air reservoir and a larger pump to pump it around the system. It's the closest looking thing to a turbo you'll ever put in this car. <laughs> Ev uses turbos to move water. <laughs> so I've stolen Sean to help me with mine from all the hours I spent on his car. All the hours he spent hiding behind the camera. What's this? It's a factory VT rim. Where's your hook? It's supposed to have a hook up here. Yeah, you go turn it, flick it. Let it go. Yeah. There we go. No, no, you're actually supposed to have a hook up there. No, that goes through the hole and you turn it sideways. No, no, no. Go check the VE. Or go check the VY. Yeah, but you're at the VY, not a VT. It's because it's callow, because oh. it's better. Oh. Yeah. Don't need no spare wheel, just in a can of gas. Yeah. Calais is just French for classy bogan, that's all Calais means. I think I've still actually got my full size VY Calais spare rim in the boot. Yeah. Chop chop! No rang bar style. Wow. So, if us removing the spare wheel and putting in the tank with 20 litres of water, I wonder what's going to be heavier. I reckon, what do you reckon that is? About 20 kilos? Let's put water in it and we'll... That's a brand new tire, look at that. That's been in there for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> brand new rim. Two Ranza. ER30. Someone look up how old that tire is. <laughs> That's where it's gonna sit. And then pump's gonna go here and pump water out that way. I think we just leave it like that. That looks good. Mm. What do you reckon? That's it. All right. More holes and Swiss cheese. <laughs> Stop fingering my hole. Oh, wait. I do now, Sean. Fill some holes. Some holes. So we decided we're going to do one massive hole. Yeah, we're going to go with an elongated hole so we can zip tie two hoses together. And then we're just going to silicon them for waterproofing. Where we need to, yeah. We just don't want to go too high because then it'll actually cause a kink underneath the body. Uh, we don't want kinky hoses. Sean's just lowering the tank a little bit just to give us some clearance because we've just put the hole in the bottom of the floor for nut cert and it is very, very close. Like it doesn't even go to the bottom. So what we'll do, drop the tank, do this, and then take come back up again. At the moment we have put the hole in to Water lines come back in, two one inch lines. There's your water pump. And then that will just go over there. You've changed the nut, you've changed that bolt. Uh, probably. Yeah. 
water lines come down, go up over the top of the heat shield for the rear muffler, down above the top of the rear subframe, and then currently sitting there. All right, what we got, Sean? Water tank. Water tank is in and it bolted down. Bolted down with some nut certs. Little, little, little big water, uh, water pump. And some nice, sexy hole work. Took us a whole lot of time to do that. Oh, shut up. You gotta, you gotta let me have one. That's all there. So that's all done up neatly. No joins. Now we're just gonna work on the trying to get that big fat pipe down to the front. Mm. Make sure whenever you cut it, always prime it before you put your gaskets or O-rings or something on. Rule steel equals rust. Stash. Yeah, in the ice tank. In the ice tank. So where are we at the moment? We've taken out the old water reservoir. That's all gone. Wires all cleaned up. Old hoses here, so that's going to come around and go down. Sean's here undoing some hoses at the front. So we're trying at the moment to re-jig all the lines to make it simpler and neater. Um, from before we had hot water coming from the top, down around triple pass and coming out down the bottom. We're now changing it to come in from the bottom, so hot will come in from the bottom. And the reason for that is because this part of the cooler spends more time in cold air, it'll be the biggest temperature difference. So the hot water should be cooled down quicker in the bottom. And then it's got more time to spend in the core and exit at the top. Um, and then from there, from leaving at the top, we'll go all the way back to the reservoir at the back. Well, getting the kettle ready. Need some hot water. Hot stuff coming through. Currently here we have the bottom of the front in the cooler. They're actually, we have four inlets at the bottom, four inlets at the top, therefore all cores are getting cooled with cold water. So this here is our return, it's fed in, it's going back underneath the K-frame, all the way to the back, and then goes on the side over the same frame. It's very cramped having two one-inch hoses, but we've, we're making it happen, just. All right, sorry that we can't really show video of us doing it due to both hands on deck, but there we are. So comes down, out, splits into two. One goes there, one goes up there. There's my sensor for the cold water, so it tells me the inlet temperature. And then they pop up. Comes out, merges back into two, down, into the coals. Hot side of the intercool where it's colder, gets cooled down, goes up, or out, and then pops out over here, down, back out that way, and then joins back there to go back to the boot. The button in my car ran out of water, Sean. Very fuel fish. Maybe we can hook up a pipe from your exhaust so all of that steam that E85 creates can go back into water. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Look good? Here it comes. The turn's coming back? The turn's coming back. That's how much flow has come back in. And we'll go check out down the front. Make sure we've got no legs. How many we got any legs, Sean? No drips. Thank you. 
annoying, but I'm not saying anything. It's still probably some air slowly getting sucked out. Not seeing any drips, not seeing any wet spots. Just some air slowly coming through the system. I can hear it. Right on top of that thing. Yeah. Did you turn the fucking timer off on the hose? No, I think I ran out of time. Time. All right, so the water lines obviously will come down the trans tunnel as it's the only real way to get to the back. We have to go down on top of the power steering rack, hug the uh, hug the hug the G fifty six. I'm gonna put some heat shielding up there to keep the heat away from the extractors onto it, and as well back here where it flips over the top to go down the other end so here we get a P bracket P clip clip it up here keep it out of the way and then put a heat shield across all this area one you'll keep it off the pipes but two you'll keep it out the floor as well and then down around the back and we'll just P clip it to the shuts out there If you're still uh, watching guys, thank you. You probably got better things to see than a fat man rolling underneath the car. But um, yeah, we're slowly getting there. Half the time is trying to think of what's gonna actually work or not. Um, all right. So, all in, I have a, put some back tubing around the edges where I could chafe. Here is the other one up the front. So it protects the uh, water lines from the cat, um, the extractors, and that then protects them up there. Alrighty. Feeling a bit moist, Sean? Yeah. 